professional chapter, and I'm very honored today to have with us Kun Indra Bhuvan, the CEO of the Hansa Hotel Group. And um, Kun Indra um, brings a lot of experience um, to a very unique uh, boutique hotel in Bangkok with two properties here at Kashmir and uh, Itsamoy, very beautiful. And I used to live in front of the one in Bangkok, so I went there all the time and you know had breakfast there and. I just love the hotel so much, the, the service quality and the food, um, the design, and I was very delighted to know that it's an eco hotel. So that's what we wanted to um, hear about today, and I'm very excited to welcome Kun Indra. Um, and the Hansa Hotel um, has received many, many awards um, from the, from Europe and from the U.S. as well, and um, within just a few years, um, I think three years, um, they're well known worldwide. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Queen Indra. So, 
it's creating more opportunity for people to employ more people to work because it's requiring a lot of people. So if we compare with other, the agriculture, the trade and logistics, and then the communication, it can be seen that hotel generating more money to the country. So opportunity again, I see as an opportunity again. So now, when I say, how hotel can contribute back to the community? Okay, I just say straight, so sorry, I just say the truth. Most of hotels that are doing CSR or sustainability actions is either the big boys or the well-branded hotel. Correct? Right. You can check on their website, Accord. They have a very strong uh, CSR. Higher they have. You see? It's all local brand. Uh, Ramada Group. I checked your uh, details also. I studied. <laughs> Oops, I mean. <laughs> so they have, the big boys usually have this kind of effort. But my next question is what about the other? There are a million of hotels in Thailand, mostly local hotels. What they can do to the community, to the people, and so on and so on and so on. So frankly to say, very little effort in that. If we, if we the operator, not developing the community, who else will do? If we don't develop them, how we can get a labor force coming to work in our hotel. I have a very interesting uh, report from Ministry of Labor. This is from 2012 uh, statistics. 52.75% of total people working in the hotel, they are classified as unskilled employees. So the higher the position, the less is the percentage. So the question is, if they are unskilled, means they will create unsustainable employment system in the hotel. Like I said, in one hotel, the ratio for employment is 1.5. Means one, uh, one room, equal with 1.5 employees. So you can calculate how many rooms you want to build. That's the ratio, the very excellent calculation of numbers of staff. So like in Kosamui, for instance, they're struggling to find staff. Most of the labor uh, force, teenager, is it? Where they go? Bangkok. Why Bangkok? Big walls. Nice food, like what we had just now. All you can mention. But in the other part of Thailand, Chiang Mai, who can slightly okay, because Samui is a big deal. And then some hotel, maybe my friends from the hotel can explain also, up to 20% of stuff turned over is happening in the hotel. In particular, in F and D department, I don't know why. In particular, the F and D department, they move, they fly very fast. So the challenge now, we cannot just pay more. Could they have a hotel called A? I have a hotel called B, and then I want to still compress staff because such a wonderful service and so on, and then I just pay more. That's not right. By the end, we, the person, the operator in the industry, we lose. Because why? When I pay more, and then you will pay more, it's not correct by the end. <laughs> this is what I believe. Generation Y, even in, if I can mention the brand, Hyatt, they make a very big uh, study in sustaining generation Y, because 
we have to face it. Most of our labor force are coming from Generation Y. Once they got bored, they, they feel they know everything, they will find a new challenge. So the question is how to sustain. <coughs> So, there are many ways to do. This is, this is one very interesting article that I read from a website called Monsters. 80% uh, of the young professional are interested in securing the job in the place where perceived as environmentally friendly. So, environmentally friendly means I want to go and I wake up every morning, I want to go to work. I used to come, I used to work in the place that when I wake up in the morning, I want to go to work because of my boss, because of the environment, many things. So how we can make the environment in general become doable, become friendly to our team members. So this is I don't know, there are many analogies, there are many uh, uh, strategies, but this is what we believe in Ansa. We have to train them, we have to educate them, we have to empower them, and we have to engage them with the, with the program. For instance, there are a lot of hotels that are doing a CSR. There are a lot of hotels that are doing a sustainable actions in their corporate as their corporate culture. But if I can ask, I can bet my ear, how many of their front line know about the project? Because why? Mostly this program is only sitting in the corporate office level. So the question is, communication is not going down. We have to communicate. How can we have a program, a successful program, without the support of our team. They are the one who by the end will drive the, the program, isn't it? So I think the key is also to engage them on the program. Explain, explain, explain. So again, back to the generation Y, as we know already. I read your email, I mean your website. The, I love my message before. I love your idea about people because, again, people is the asset of everything. So, CSR, what we believe, is one of the key success to keep our staff busy in a positive way. When they are busy, they don't have time to do when they start to do <laughs> they are not focusing on the job. Guaranteed. This is what I say to my team. If your department, if your manager start to gossip, it means you don't have things to do. Let's find things to do. Something more benefit. That's I mean, you know, it's 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 happening everywhere. I believe it is. It's not only in the book So what we do in Hansa, we are a small hotel, we are a tiny little particle from the, the industry. Nobody knows us. We are trying to make people know that we are different. Um, what we do, again, I want to make our staff busy. There's many ways. What we do, we have behind of our hotel, it's disaster. <laughs> if guests come into our corridors, this is the property in some way. If they go to the corridor and then they'll see that piece of land, and then they will say, Oh my god, what is that? This is five star, is that not even our land? It's full of garbage, people piling up, and so on, and so on, and so on. And then I decided, okay, why don't we take over that land? Why don't we use that land to something useful to the community? So what happened? We turned that five thousand meter square of piece of land into something useful. We make it organic garden, we make it sustain, we make the hotel to generate the produce of the compost, everything back to them. And then once we have the produce from there, 
we give back 100% to the community. Uh, we will have, I'll send you some photos. We will have the next trip to Suratani to donate around 2,000 US dollars. That's from two harvests that we have uh, from selling those vegetables and so on from the organic garden. And then, like I said, to be sustained, I will go further about sustaining. The other part of hotel, as we have we know, we use a lot of energy. Maybe our friend from the Red Estates, the uh, shopping centers, like SIA, for instance, uh, they use a lot of energy, also, but not as consistent as we are. They close at 10 o'clock, is it? We close, we never close. So we use a lot of energy. So 25% energy is being used higher than other sector for hotel. So as we know, energy is not cheap. In southern part of Thailand, the electricity is inconsistent. The supply is inconsistent means not enough power to generate all the electricity. So, there are many ways actually to, to play around with this because total electricity bill is around 8%, 8 to 10% from the overall revenue. So, you can imagine if your revenue one year 500 million, 10% is already grown for energy. There are many ways for hotels to, uh, to do that. But they have to see from two areas that use the most of power in the hotel. The first one, of course, the guest room. Have aircon, all fancy lights, elegant, use a lot of energy. And then after that, the kitchen. There's some monsters also. The oven, the chiller, oh my god, it's amazing. So there are many ways actually to do. Again, the most important, if you want to build a hotel, you have to plan it properly. How to plan it properly? You have to find the expert if you are not familiar with it. There are many company, design company that uh, can, can work with, with, let's say they are certified by uh, the lead or ISO, 90014, for instance. This is can be done. This is what we see before we build the hotel. How to reduce the aircon in the high rise building, for instance, in Bangkok? How we play around with that? Because the energy is very big. Okay, let's do open corridors. There's no complaining. Design wise is funky. Safety wise, okay, nobody jumps. Um, Many ways to do it. Electricity is the key factor. If we can save 10% of our money from that expense, we can sustain it. If this is this is one uh, area that we we implement. Like I said, we are we are nothing. We are small part of the community. But we are trying our best uh, to contribute back. Um, this is a simple thing that we do. We we install tinted windows, so less icon needed compared to those without tinted. Uh, we reuse the linens, uh, low flow shower systems, the urinal system in the public toilets, for instance. It can save fifty. Thousand gallons of water per year, so that's a lot. Uh, all of this actually uh, will be available on the handouts. Uh, I will give my handouts uh, shortly after. Uh, so the ultimate result of this action is to have a win-win situation. How to manage the cost effectively without jeopardizing the quality, the experience of the case. I think that's what we always uh, wanted or we aiming as a hotelier. 
and also to the environment. This is something interesting. Waste. I read one, one article in the, one of the daily magazines, uh, one room, they produce 400 to 100 grams of garbage every day. So, if I put an analogy, that, let's say occupancy of that hotel is 75% occupancy, that will generate 665 million kilograms of garbage a year. So that's a lot I need to What we can do as a hotel? And then 54% of the hotel solid actually can be recycled, can be reused. So what we try to do is we try to connect it our program with the other uh, program that we make already. So what one of the programs that we make is we are making the uh, organic garden. So from there, we need money, is it? I don't want to take the money from the hotel as much. I can do, but I prefer to find something else. Then we recycle. We sell, we collect, we recycle, and then we can get 14 tons of materials. A lot. You can imagine in one day, a hotel with 74 rooms can use 100 kilo of orange to make an orange juice. So in one month is one. Month. So a lot of trees, you know. And then back again to that orange. Most of the waste from the hotel also coming from the kitchen. They they, they don't use the peel of orange. They have many trimmings, vegetables, and so on. So we use as a compost. So from there we can save annually an amount of hundred thousand baht worth of buying compost, worth of buying fertilizer to make our garden green, beautiful, and to support our organic garden. So the water again, they use a lot of water. So we are quite lucky because when we design it, we can, we can make the dirty water become grey water that we can reuse to be for the garden. Some hotels, some apartments, even they use for the toilets. Not the shower, but like the toilet room. They, 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 they use that. That's a lot already. This is the interesting part. Like, like I mentioned before, Somehow we cannot be uh, put aside. We have to sit together with the hotel and community. Some hotel that I see, they are a little bit arrogant. I don't care about you. I find a hotel, I'm five star, let's say. You just stay there. I disagree with that. I see that because one of my friends put in that hotel. Um, I think it's not right. Because, again, if employment in a hotel is unstable, it means that the employment in the surrounding area is unstable and the development in that area is you not know, the flow properly. So, how is it? We keep thinking because, again, like I said, when we start, we have 15% the number rate. That's very high. How to reduce the disturb over it? So we make them easy. We train them. We, we give them empowerment. And then we create the CSR. Okay. And then once of the labor intensive CSR project that requiring the teamwork is Hansa University. We just launched Hansa University uh, recently in educating the poor from the surrounding area mostly orphan, or they work, they are smart boys, smart girls, but they don't have money to go to university, we take them. We give them all the education to be a hotelier. Uh, also, this is giving opportunity for my team, mostly the managers, to share their knowledge. So, each managers will have their own module of uh, topics. 
become a lecturer. I take a psychology, I'm a psychology, I take also accounting, I write numbers, and then my director of school takes another part of, uh, you know, we try to make it as university. So, we are hoping, well, this is nothing, at least we start, but we are hoping that once they are graduated, they can work without fighting with those that graduated from university. Because day-to-day -day, uh, reality, university candidates, high school candidates. And most of the hotel, they will take the university candidates. So the high school will end up as selling some time probably. Or they become a taxi driver. I'm not saying that's too bad, but uh, in terms of sustaining, it's something that we can develop. So once they are graduated, we give them a job. So it's one one thing. If we give them a job, if we cannot we cannot uh, find them a job, we contact the hotel association to take them to work in their place. Okay, management style. This is also something that can be can be a problem. If we are talking about a hotel, one to run a CSR or sustainable actions in their portfolio. So there are two types of hotels. Like Ansar, we manage ourselves. Like other part, the owners who have the money at the building, they give to another people. You guys, can you manage? Let's sign a contract for a certain year. You give me this promise of money. And in return, I give you this promise of commission or incentive. So, the problem now, if that hotel is managed by operator, management company, I'm not saying the management company is not good, no, they are very good. But mostly the management company, they work based on what? Incentive. <laughs> the more uh, top line revenue coming to their pocket. The bigger money they will receive to their pocket. Is it? If I can earn one million billion baht, then I can get uh, ten million out of the ten million baht. So if I get five hundred thousand, then I get nothing. So again, back again to the patient. If is the owner really want to do something to the community? This is back again to commitment. Is it? If there's no commitment, then what? So if the owner, let's say. I believe they want to build a hotel, they want to have this operator to manage the hotel, then what? They have to make an agreement. Guys, okay, let's plan, let's help the community, let's do the CSR. I give you an incentive. How about this one? So by the end, money talks sometimes. It? Sorry to say, this is the reality world. Reality in the world. Is it? So this can reduce conflict by the end. If we, we put it up front, then everybody is clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, if I miss anything? Okay, yes, please. Yes. Any questions? In Samui, our CSR pilot project is located uh, in Samui. So from there, we do the experiment. It's like a laboratory room. Uh, we try, we test, it works, then we spread the virus to the rest of Samui. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the presentation. It was very interesting, I think. Um, you mentioned that there are around 10,000 hotels in Thailand. Yes. Um, obviously, you guys are one of the leaders who have implemented the sustainable program. But would you advise me to convince the other 9,999 hotels? How, how to convince them to do something like this? Very good questions. The first things to do, this kind of seminar is one of ways to invite in particular hoteliers to get involved more. Because by the end, we have to convince the owner 
who has the money, who has the property to get info. So I think the more we have, the more the information about how important of CSR and sustainability is being uh, spread around, I think that's one of the key factors. Uh, there is, there is uh, hotel associations that we can use to spread this. So intensive approach will be required in a way to influence the decision. It's a bit challenging. Well, it doesn't make money. Oh, no. Okay, I just said the truth. I just said the truth. Okay, we are businessmen in the day. But I don't see that way, okay? Don't get me wrong, okay? Talking about tax, revenue tax. We can get a tax rebate if we do training. We can get a tax rebate 200% if we do what? Donations. So think from that way. As a business point of view, this is what I can convince the owner, guys. Why, why, why do you want to keep the money? Use. I'm not saying that I don't like to pay tax. But I mean, the government is even supporting. So as a, as, as a businessman, they should see that. The question is, they know. What's the name Hansa? Hansa is coming from, it's uh, Sanskrit, means happiness. So that's our philosophy uh, in managing the hotel based on family uh, orientation. We don't believe on stress management. Uh, there's no such of yelling, there's, there's no such of argument negatively in Hansa. That's what we are trying to implement in our daily life. Yeah, I'm very impressed also by my program, which is related to environment, to supply chain with the garden, to work with the community. Do your customer, your clients, is attracted, is interested, is coming more to the hotel because of the garden, because of the environment, because of what you're doing? And the second question would be, if they are interested, if they are, interested, if they are coming because of that, Will you propose to them some innovation in activities? Huh? Visiting environment sites who are different from the park everybody is visiting, or visiting communities with farmers. Such activities will make a, a difference okay. with the community. Yeah, with yes people. Uh, well, there is a pro and con for hotel. Whether can they use this? element as their PR, can they use this element to attract people to come and stay in their hotel? The, the answer is yes, but it's not significant. So the reason why we don't, we don't, we don't want, because we don't want to have a great wash. Means we use all kind of this publicity in a way to make our hotel like a green, you know. No. But there is around 10 to 15 percent of bookings are being generated from this program. Because why we put it in the website, we communicate, we don't make it too obvious, we make it as normal, and people come in. Do we have an interaction with guests? Yes. For instance, the last last Christmas, we built a Christmas tree from elephant dolls, and then we encourage people if you want to donate, we you can buy. Either you, you bring back the dolls or you we keep the dolls and then we buy the school bags. So we got around 2,700 US dollars from the doors, and we go directly to the school. So we can give around 180 students. So they're happy and they're asking, can I have a bicycle, please? <laughs> How to carry bicycle to school? And 180 students, you know, okay. I hope that's. So please give Kunindra a big round of applause for his excellent presentation. Uh, the Association, I would like to present a little gift.
So just um, some announcements. Um, next month is April, and that's so grand. So we won't be organizing anything. We'll let you uh, go on holiday. <laughs> and then we'll be back in May uh, with a talk by Michael, who will be Pat, he'll be talking about water resources management, which will be very interesting. And we haven't um, organized a trip yet, but perhaps we can talk about visiting a hotel or something. So, so we'll keep you updated. Um, this Saturday, I hope to see um, some of you to join us um, on a trip to AA Papers Paper Mill in Bajinbury. It's a very interesting project. They hire um, rice farmers to grow paper trees along the rice paddies as a way to uh, tackle the problem of farmers' debt in Thailand, as you know, is a very hot topic. And um, you know, it's very unsustainable, so um, we are very interested in how companies are trying to help um, you know, society uh, with, with, through business. So it should be a very interesting uh, case study. Um, Kudindra's presentation will be available uh, as well online um, on our website, as well as the video and all the videos of the past uh, presentations in the last uh, at least four years are available online. So please do visit us on sustainability.org. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday and then again in May. And one last announcement is very exciting. At the end of April, we have uh, two things going on. Um, on the day of the session orientation, we'll all have a, uh, we also have a film screening um, uh, of a documentary called uh, The End of the Line. And it's a documentary that was um, awarded you know, many, many awards, and um, it's about unsustainable fishing and how it impacts our society, our environment, and, and uh, our global economy. Very, very important topic because our oceans are suffering from the tuna and the salmon that we're eating. And um, so we'll be showing that to the incoming students of Sassin. And it's also open to the public, so it's to all of you, and we'll be providing both free popcorn as a compliment of uh, create the, <laughs> the uh, uh, what's it called, create? <laughs> Corporate Responsibility and Ethics um, Association for Thai Enterprise. And the uh, beverages will be sponsored by Coca-Cola Thailand. So we're very excited for that day, uh, Sunday, April 27th. And uh, following the, um, the day following, um, we have a five-day intensive uh, master class sustainability workshop for uh, leading change. Um, so that would be very interesting for those of you who are interested in taking uh, the sustainability mindset further in your, organization, in your organizations or as a change agent. So we, we hope you look into that. And thank you all very much again for coming and see you Saturday or at the end of April. Goodbye.